so we're going to have a uh, 10 to 15 minute presentation here on Islamic finance opportunities in Malaysia. And this is coming from Mr. Nick Mohammed Din Nick Musa, the director of the MIFC promotion unit, which is uh, affiliated very closely uh, with the Central Bank of Malaysia. Uh, so please join me in welcoming now uh, Mr. Nick Mohammed Din Nick Musa. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. All praises to Allah, most gracious, most merciful. Um, Your Highness, Your Excellencies, um, distinguished guests, ladies and uh, gentlemen, Assalamu alaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh, and a very, very good afternoon. Uh, the challenge I had um, before lunch, ha having a presentation before lunch, is that when you go into injury time, then you'll be competing with uh, the call to lunch. And uh, now I have uh, another challenge after lunch. If, if the lunch is very good and the view is superb and the company is great, so the, the next challenge is uh, how I want to attract you to uh, and have your complete attention. Um, I'm, I'm very delighted uh, to be here and also excited because this is my first trip to the beautiful city of uh, uh, Oman. And I wish to thank the, the host uh, and the organizers for inviting me to share with you the topic of Islamic finance opportunities to, in Malaysia. Um, what I want to say from at the onset is that I am indeed very encouraged that Oman is uh, gradually as well as uh, rapid, rapidly uh, developing Islamic finance uh, alongside the uh, traditional uh, financial system. If I can uh, show my uh, first slide, uh, allow me to um, allow me to uh, present to you a snapshot of the uh, Malaysian Islamic financial uh, system. Malaysia now, uh, alhamdulillah, has a comprehensive dual financial system, uh, the conventional and the Islamic uh, operating uh, hand in hand, and it has been in place for almost 30 years. And um, we have also developed a comprehensive uh, Islamic financial system for the last uh, 30 years. Um, this Islamic financial system is uh, participated by over 20 full-fledged um, Islamic banks, and this is not to mention the window banks. I think we have over, over uh, there's more than 10 um, conventional banks with Islamic windows. We have more than uh, five uh, invest, investment banks also participating in Islamic finance. There are now 12 Takaful um, companies operating in Malaysia. Um, we have four Re-Takaful or Islamic uh, reinsurance in Malaysia. And there are now 18 full-fledged Islamic fund management companies offering a wide range of uh, products. And this, uh, and this system is supported by a range of professional firms uh, consisting of legal firm, accounting firm, IT firm, and of course, Shara experts. Um, just to show you um, some figures on the right-hand side, the total uh, assets of the Islamic banking um, system now uh, accounted for over 23% of the total banking system. So the, 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 the market share has about tripled over the last decade, and the uh, Islamic financial system also now experience, is experiencing a very healthy growth. The risk-weighted capital ratio, or the, um, the, 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 the capital ratio now stands at almost 15%, and we are slightly uh, better than the uh, total average banking system, which stands at about 14.7%. And touching a little bit on the Islamic uh, capital market, about 50% of the total outstanding debt securities are Shara compliant. So this has been uh, a, a phenomenon for the past uh, few years. And about 14% uh, percent of the AUM of uh, collective investment schemes and mandates are already Islamic. And about 89% of the listed uh, securities on our nation boards are, uh, are Sharia stocks. And uh, to support the call of uh, His Excellency Tun Dr. Mahavir Muhammad this morning, um, I wish to show you a slide on the potential areas of uh, collaboration for Malaysia and uh, Oman in the area of Islamic finance. 
Malaysia, as you all may be very well aware, is strategically located to serve as a uh, platform for Omani corporations and investors as a gateway to Southeast Asia, uh, as, as well as a gateway to the Asia-Pacific and uh, Asia at large. The, specifically on uh, Southeast Asia, the region has over uh, 600 um, million population. So if you were to have a, a, a hub in uh, Malaysia, you have immediately, you have this uh, huge uh, market of about 600 million people and 50% of whom are Muslim. And they mainly reside in uh, Indonesia, Malaysia, uh, Thailand and Philippines. And all the uh, ASEAN uh, countries, they have a combined GDP of uh, in excess of 2 trillion uh, US dollar. So that makes it the 10th uh, largest uh, region in, in, around the world. And um, here I may uh, wish to make a call for the uh, Omani corporations and uh, um, companies to utilize Islamic finance uh, and use Malaysia as a hub for your intermediary in terms of your, to facilitate trade, uh, investment, uh, financing, as well as uh, fundraising. Uh, the next slide will show you the, uh, on the legal, regulatory and uh, supervisory front. This is uh, one of the collaboration that is, uh, as I speak, is happening between our two countries. That although we are at a different pace and stages of development, I, I believe that going forward we can uh, have a lot uh, to do together uh, where we can have, where I believe that we have a great uh, collaborative um, effort between our two countries. Because we have laid down the framework in a very gradual manner, starting with a uh, dedicated Islamic banking law in 1983, followed by the uh, Takaful and uh, government funding funds. And now we are combining those funds into one omnibus uh, Islamic financial services legislation. And that is currently being uh, tabled in the Malaysian parliament. And um, later in the 1990s, um, the securities laws, laws were also enacted by the Securities Commission of Malaysia. So as a testimony to the regulatory cooperation, uh, together with the effort by uh, Islamic Development Bank, the IDB, the Central Bank of Malaysia is, and I'm pleased to, uh, to announce that we will jointly host a workshop here in Muscat, Oman, on these topics that I've mentioned, and this is tentatively scheduled to be held sometime uh, early next year, inshallah. Uh, another key area is the greater connectivity that uh, uh, between uh, Oman and Malaysia, and this can be achieved by Omani, uh, Oman companies, Oman players, uh, financial players, to, be, to have a base in Malaysia, and of course, vice versa. Um, at the Central Bank, we are, we are offering a 100% uh, foreign-owned international Islamic banking license for your uh, hub uh, in Malaysia. This is to conduct international currency business and you will enjoy a uh, tax holiday where you don't, uh, where you'll be exempted for, from any uh, income tax. And the uh, Securities Commission uh, of Malaysia is also offering a 100% foreign owned Islamic fund management uh, company license. This is for the conduct of any currency business uh, in Malaysia. And it, this entity will also uh, enjoy a tax holiday. And other in incentives uh, include uh, a green lane for um, employment uh, permits, as well as um, withholding tax exemption for, uh, Islam for the holding of Islamic uh, financial instruments and also there's tax uh, stamp duty exemption. And of course, um, I think inv investors and players can also have a joint venture with existing Malaysian banks with up to 70% um, of the equity can be held by foreigner. Um, the next slide will show you that arising from this potential uh, increased collaboration between uh, our two countries, one key area that can be capitalized is the area of liquidity management between Malaysian and Oman Islamic financial uh, institution. Islamic banks in Oman and Malaysia can work together in meeting each other's uh, liquidity uh, requirement, be it uh, short or in uh, surplus. And uh, just to share with you some of the experiences of our uh, Associ Association of Islamic Banking Institutions Malaysia, or IBIM, because they represent the 20-plus uh, the Islamic banks uh, in Malaysia, has established linkages with their counterparts in Turkey, in, uh, in Indonesia, 
and also with UK, just to, just to name a few, this is to develop more cross-border Islamic liquidity management. And this is where I believe uh, market players in Oman and Malaysia can collaborate uh, towards increasing uh, cross-border flows and at the same time uh, better manage the risk exposures. And I wish here to, to, uh, to call upon the uh, Oman, uh, Omani financial institution uh, in this hall to establish contact with uh, some of our uh, Malaysian financial system, and I, I, I believe some, a few are in this hall. So it will be, inshallah, a good beginning to a very bright uh, future. Uh, next slide is on the collaboration on uh, human capital uh, development, which is again another uh, important uh, collaboration. This is more to support the development of Islamic finance as well as pave the way for uh, more, um, more innovation, product uh, innovation. Here we wish to invite uh, Islamic financial players to use INSEAF. INSEAF is the International Center for Education in Islamic uh, Finance. It's, it's like a global uh, Islamic corporate university for uh, Islamic finance. And this is to help spearhead further the Islamic financial development in Oman. Uh, currently, there are over 1,800 students from almost 80 countries with the flagship um, professional course called the Chartered Islamic Finance Professional or CIFP being offered online and is alongside um, the PhD as well as the master's program. And um, alhamdulillah, I'm happy to note that uh, there are currently four students from Oman, three of whom are, are doing CIFP and I think one is doing uh, his or her PhD. So there are numerous uh, opportunities for for, uh, for Omanis to use uh, Malaysia as a, as a fundraising platform, which is on my uh, following slide. Uh, and this is to facilitate FDIs into, into Malaysia and also to, to, Asia, to Asia, where you could use uh, Malaysia as your fundraising uh, platform, as well as uh, besides for FDI purposes, it could be also for business expansion uh, internationally. And some of the opportunities uh, would include cost effectiveness and uh, swift time, efficient, swift and efficient time to market. Uh, to, there is a broad range of innov innovative um, issuances and a wide range of investor base. Um, I will not go to um, every detail of, um, of, the, of the features, but what I want to highlight is mainly the, um, the cost effectiveness of raising a sukuk especially a ringgit suku out of Malaysia. So from this, um, from this slide, what I can uh, show you is that many, uh, multi, many MNCs, multinational corporations, many MDBs, uh, multilateral development banks, and also um, national corporations, they have preferred to, uh, to issue a suku over a bond uh, in Malaysia as, as I said earlier, it is very, very cost effective. And this slide shows that um, there is a cost saving of about four to six um, basis points. And when I compare Apple with Apple, here I'm comparing a three-year bond uh, with a three-year suku yield. What, what we have discovered is that for a triple A paper uh, suku, which is on the right-hand uh, column of the slide, uh, and circle 3.66, it the, the yield is um, lower if you compare it with a three-year bond of a similar rating triple A paper with a yield of 3.7. Here we see even though the, uh, the saving is small, four basis point, but if the suku size is huge, then I think the cost saving of, um, of uh, that can be made is very large. And I, I see my colleague from uh, Maybank there is, uh, is nodding that, uh, that uh, the, the, even though the saving is um, the savings big if the uh, issuance of the suku is, uh, is very large. And this is particularly true in the ringgit market as there is a bigger demand for suku over a bond and that's because the uh, investor base for suku is wider than a bond because for the uh, investor base for suku will also include uh, conventional uh, investors. Hence, if you have a bigger investor base for, um, for suku, in this example, it will, you have greater demand and it will bring down the yield. So it will be very, very much cheaper for the, um, 
for the uh, suku, uh, for the issuer to issue a su suku over a bond. Uh, just to show you some track record in the next slide. Um, so far, the on the left hand side of the slide, the GCC issuers, which which are the one I particularly would like to uh, highlight, uh, include the Abu Dhabi National Energy Company, or TAKA, they issued, uh, I think, about 650 uh, million ringgit uh, sometime early this year. And the other issuers um, from the GCC include the GIC, the Kuwait-based um, Gulf Investment Corporation, the, the National Bank of Abu Dhabi. The IDB itself has issued a ringgit, if I'm not mistaken, uh, twice in a row. And... Um, the, the, the Bahrain um, Sovereign Wealth Fund uh, called Mumtalakat, they have a three billion program um, in Malaysia, but they have yet to uh, issue. And also the Gulf Investment Bank, um, which I believe is one of the uh, sponsors for this event, they also have a 3.5 billion program. So they can, with this program, uh, they can issue with this program approved by the Securities Commission, and so that so they can uh, issue the suku um, at any time, if, whenever they so wish. And as you can see from the right-hand uh, slide of the, of the chart, uh, we, are, we are beginning to see the platform in Malaysia uh, gradually evolving into a multi-currency uh, suku platform, where we are beginning to see the US dollar suku being issued out of Malaysia, the renminbi, the Singapore dollar, and we hope uh, to see perhaps one of the uh, GCC um, um, currencies uh, to be issued out of the uh, Malaysian market. And just to highlight one, uh, one issue, which is Aziata. The Aziata, it's on the bottom right column of the, of the slide. It's, it is a Malaysian-based regional uh, telecommunication, telecommunication company, and they issued a 1 billion renminbi, renminbi suku, um, I think it was last, last month or last two months, and it was very, very uh, well received, where it received a uh, oversubscription over -subscription rate of about seven times, with Asian investors uh, taking up most of the um, uh, most of the suku. So this is just to highlight that uh, Asia uh, is becoming a very uh, important market for the issuance of suku, where a lot of the um, uh, investment comes from uh, the Asian region, where which, in which of course includes the the Middle East. And this is my, uh, my last slide because I promised that I will um, keep it uh, short and brief. Um, of course, the, the, the list of collaboration between Malaysia and, uh, uh, and Oman is, is, is inexhaustive. There can be many others. But just to highlight you, the, the last one uh, on, on my list is the opportunity for Omani entities um, in the commodity Murabaha or Tawaruk. Um, or tower concept. This is where you where you can avail yourself to the um, to the to using uh, bursa suk al silak uh, or or bisas in short. And this is a multi currency commodity trading platform which is being handled by the uh, Middle Malaysian boss called the uh, Bursa Malaysia. And it's multi currency um, and the, the trading can be done uh, online. It's 24/7. It, it, it never sleeps. It's and it's fully Shara compliant from end to end. And it's and it uses palm oil as the um, commodity being traded. And over time, there will be more and more uh, commodities which will be included in the approved uh, commodity uh, commodity for to be used for trading. And the the last two that they have approved is um, one is plastic resin and the other is. Um, I think it's uh, palm oil, in. it is some form of uh, cooking oil. And these are some of the um, assets or commodity that have been used for trading um, at the BISAS uh, platform. And this platform is, um, it will facilitate, inshallah, the Islamic um, financial transaction. This is for the creation of suku, uh, investment, deposit, financing, uh, so on and so forth. And, and this is mainly used for parties which do not already have a underlying assets um, for them to participate in Islamic finance. So with, with, that, um, with that, I wish to, um, I wish to end here. Um, the, these are some of the websites which I um, invite you to, to, 
to explore. And I hope that um, I have imparted some useful information to you. And I pray to Allah Ta'ala that um, our two countries, inshallah, will have a greater collaboration uh, for further progress. Uh, with that, I wish to thank you for your kind attention. Assalamu alaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh.